I haven't had one of these things for quite some time now. This is a Simplicity Walk Behind tractor. I don't know the vintage. I think they made them in the 50s, give or take somewhere around there, maybe into the 60s too. It's a model VA, has a three-speed transmission with reverse, the cultivator on the back, and a model 14 Briggs & Stratton that does roll over, and the gas tank is actually still clean in it. It's obviously been sitting outside most of the time. I think there's water still in the transmission. It just needs a quick going through, get it running, and we'll see if we can get it running and driving again, which shouldn't be too bad. But it is a pretty neat old piece. As you can see, the tire is pretty well dry rotted from all the years of sitting. Went to air it up earlier today and the sidewall ended up blowing apart. So, main thing is though, it still rolls around. I don't think anything's locked up in the transmission except for this little shifter ball here from sitting. It won't go side to side, so that's going to have to get pulled apart and freed up. No idea what the carburetor or anything else looks like inside, but should be able to get this little Briggs 14 going again. So anyways, let's start pulling the thing apart and get to it. Unfortunately, I might have to take this tire off to get the shroud all the way off. Or maybe not. Definitely been full for quite some time. But the bottom of the shroud is nice and solid, so that's a good thing. Now we just got to get the flywheel off to get to the ignition system behind it. And as you can see here on the flywheel of the Briggs, there's a 57 cast into it, which means that the engine is a 1957 because they cast the year into the flywheels. Or it doesn't look like the mice chewed any of this up. I can't tell if that's a crack in the coil or if that's just a flaw from when they poured the plastic around it, but everything looks to be all right. Just to blow everything out, clean it up, and then I should only have to just clean the points under the cover, and with any luck, this ignition system will still work and we'll have spark. Get this points box off of here and see what everything looks like underneath. And the main reason why I'm doing the ignition system before I do anything else on here is because that fancy looking coil that goes behind the flywheel, they are very far, very hard to find, and when you find them they're very expensive. And I do have a new old stock one with the original Briggs box and all that, but obviously enough this isn't something that I'm going to end up using it on, because to me it's just not worth it. It looks fairly decent. points are definitely corroded from sitting but they should clean up all right and with any luck we can get a little bit of spark out of them so the points are cleaned I regapped them just 20 thousandths and with any luck the camera will pick this up we have a nice white hot spark so that means I can finish pulling the head off of this thing and keep going with it Let's see if we can get that valve unstuck underneath here might have to see about warming this one up a little bit. If 
but we might just get lucky. Not too overly bad. Someone's definitely been here before. Probably just before it stopped getting used. You can see the pistons got a bunch of scrape marks on it from either someone had the head off scraping it or sticking something down the plug hole. But it didn't feel like it had any compression. Both valves are moving, but more than likely it's just got some carbon and crap sitting on the seats, so I'm gonna wire brush around them quick. Actually this exhaust one's pretty rusty, so that's probably why. So in this case, when it's got a rusty valve seat, and I don't feel like having to lap the valves in, because I'm not going to pull the whole valve train out just to lap this one valve in, I call this the redneck valve job, is I'll take a piece of sandpaper and I'll put it underneath the valve seat, and I'll just close it just a little bit, enough so it pinches the paper, and then I'll just run it around the inside, and that'll kind of clean the the heavy stuff off the valve seat and help the valve seal a little bit better. Heads all back on and torqued down with the gasket and now we can start delving into the fuel system. Carburetor's out. I just walked, wire brushed a lot of the dirt and crap off of it that it built up over the years. So now we can split it open and take a look at the inside. And depending on how it is, we can always run it through the glass speed blaster, clean it up. Not too overly bad for a machine that's been sitting outside for the past probably 20 some odd years. Inside looks pretty decent. I don't know if you guys can see it, it's just a little bit of white powdery gas left in there. So that'll clean up nice in the bead blaster. And the float and everything looks good on the top half, so we shouldn't have to blast that. Of course it depends on what it looks like underneath this gasket. So it might not hurt to blow that off in the glass bead blaster too and shine it up a little bit. All the carburetor parts cleaned up real nice in the glass bead blaster, so now we can start reassembly.
when you put these ones together, you got to make sure that that main jet tube ends up hitting the hole inside inside the ventry here. Because if you miss the hole, you can catch the edge of it, and you can end up dimpling the top of the tube, or you can bend it because it'll hit the side of the ventry and start going up instead of going into the tube. So you got to be careful about those. So before the carburetor goes on, I just want to take care of the fuel bowl on the bottom of the tank. And this was the one that was on it. It's kind of shellacked up inside. It's kind of in tough condition. And it just so happens that I have a plethora of them that I've pulled off of Gravely's and repair jobs that have been replaced. So I get a lot of old parts for them. And I managed to come up with enough parts to make a good fuel bowl, which hopefully will not leak. So we're going to get this cleaned up, get that onto the tank, and then we can start mounting everything up for the carburetor. Well, apparently this shroud was solid until you start scraping the inside with a putty knife and you end up pushing a hole through the front and you end up pushing a hole through the bottom. So I just took off the heavy stuff, what I could inside, I'm just going to spray the rest of this with oil and mount it back up. Engine is all back together and ready to go. Fuel system is all back together. So that's ready to fire up. I got my throttle cable all freed up and that's all operational working. The last thing I have to do is take care of this transmission. It's probably full, almost up to the level plug with water inside of it. So I got to drain that down, refill it with some used gear oil that I have kicking around here. And I also have to take off the shifter ball here because as you can see, the shifter will go up and down as it's supposed to to pull it out of gear, but it will not go side to side because that's stuck inside of these collars. So we got to get that pulled out and freed up, and then we should be all set to go. Well, that's about a good two cups of water there draining out. Filled this quart bottle about halfway. Simple as that, folks. Just a plastic shift ball. Rides in a couple of collars that have beveled edges on the inside of it. And then there's a beveled plastic, or a beveled like a rubber membrane that goes on the inside of this, almost like a cup. So I just gotta knock these out, clean them up, grease everything, and then put it all back together.
shifter is back to working like it should now. You can pull it out, move it side to side so everything goes into gear nice. I got some fuel in the tank, so let's roll this thing out and see if we can get it to fire up. Well, that's going to be all for now on the Simplicity VA Walk Behind Tractor. Turned out to be a nice running little rig, and you can't beat the way these cast iron Briggs number series run, even despite the smoke on this one. So, pretty happy that I got it going again, and it was a good save. So anyways, folks, there you have it.